Welcome to the Appendix, where we read the primary sources of the past so that the present can be better understood. Today's primary source, Virginia's Cession of Western Lands to the United States. The resolution of Congress of October 10, 1780, and the attitude of Maryland towards ratification of the Articles of Confederation gave a powerful impulse to the cession of the land's claims of the states to the United States. New York and Connecticut expressed their willingness to cede their claims as early as 1781. The following year, Congress accepted the New York cession. The claims of Virginia were the most extensive and the strongest of those of any states. They were based not only on charter rights, but on the achievements of Clark in the Northwest. Virginia's first session in 1781 was coupled with conditions that were not acceptable to Congress. The session of 1783 was promptly accepted and the deed signed March 1, 1784. The clauses in the session reserving military bounty lands north of the Ohio are of particular importance. Section 1. Whereas the Congress of the United States did, by their act of the sixth day of September, in the year 1780, recommend to the several states in the Union, having claims to waste and unappropriated lands in the western county, a liberal cession to the United States of a portion of their respective claims for the common benefit of the Union. Section 2. Whereas the Commonwealth did, on the second day of January, in the year of 1781, yield to the Congress of the United States, for the benefit of the said states, all right, title, and claim, which the said Commonwealth had to the territory northwest of the River Ohio, subject to the conditions annexed to the said Act of Session. Section 3. And whereas the United States and Congress assembled have, by their act of 13th of September last, stipulated the terms on which they agreed to accept the cession of this state, should the legislative approve thereof, which terms, although they do not come up to the proposition of this commonwealth, are conceived on the whole to approach so nearly to them as to induce this state to accept thereof in full confidence that Congress will in justice to this state for the liberal session she hath made, earnestly press upon the other states large tracts of waste and uncultivated territory, the propriety of making sessions equally liberal for the common benefit and support of the Union, be it enacted by the General Assembly that it shall and may be lawful for the delegates of this state to the Congress of the United States to make over unto the United States in Congress assembled for the benefit of the said states all right, title, and claim, as well of soil as jurisdiction which this commonwealth hath to the territory or tract of the country within the limits of Virginia Charter, situate, lying, and being to the northwest of the river Ohio, subject to the terms and conditions contained in the before recited act of Congress on the 13th day of September last, that is to say, upon conditions that the territory so ceded shall be laid out and formed into states, containing a suitable extent of territory, not less than 100 nor more than 150 miles square, or as near thereto as circumstances will omit, to the states so formed shall be distinct Republican states and admitted members of the Federal Union, having the same rights of sovereignty, freedom, and independence as the other states, that the necessary and reasonable expenses incurred by this state in subduing any British posts or in maintaining forts or garrison within and for the defense or acquiring any part of the territory so ceded or relinquished shall be fully reimbursed by the United States, 
and that one commissioner shall be appointed by Congress, one by this commonwealth, and another by those two commissioners, or a majority of them shall be authorized and empowered to adjust and liquidate the account of the necessary and reasonable expenses incurred by the state, which they shall judge to be comprised within the intent and meaning of the Acts of Congress of the 10th of October, 1780, respecting such expenses, that of the French and Canadian inhabitants and other settlers of the Keshiski, St. Vincent's, and the neighboring villages, who have professed themselves citizens of Virginia, shall have their possessions and titles confirmed to them, and be protected in the enjoyment of their rights and liberties. That a quantity not exceeding 150,000 acres of land promised by this state shall be allowed and granted to the then Colonel, now General, George Roger Clark, and to be officers and soldiers of his regiment, who marched with him with the post Kashiskis and St. Vincent's were reduced, and to the officers and soldiers that have been since incorporated into the said regiment to be laid off in one tract, the length of which not to exceed double the breadth in such place on the northwest side of the Ohio as a majority of the officers shall choose and to be afterwards divided among the said officers and soldiers in due proportion according to the law of Virginia, that in case the quantity of good lands on the southeast side of the Ohio upon the rivers of Cumberland River and between Green River and Tennessee River, which have been reserved by law for the Virginia troops upon continental establishment, should from the North Carolina line bearing in further upon the Cumberland lands then was expected prove insufficient for their legal bounties, the deficiency should be made up to the said troops in good lands to be laid off between the rivers Sitio and Little Miami on the northwest side of the river Ohio in such proportions as have been engaged to them by the laws of Virginia that all the lands within the territory so ceded to the United States and not reserved for or appropriated to any of the before-mentioned purposes or disposed of in bounties to the officers and soldiers of the American army shall be considered as a common fund for the use and benefit of such of the United States as have become or shall become members of the Confederation or Federal Alliance of the said states, Virginia inclusive, according to their usual respective proportions in the general change and expenditure, and shall be faithfully and bona fide disposed of for that purpose and for no other use or purpose whatsoever, provided that the trust hereby reposed in the delegates of this state shall not be excluded unless three of them at least are present in Congress. Thank you for joining us for our primary source today on the appendix. We will see you in the stacks.